We had to borrow a wheelchair and negotiate our way there. The whole thing felt surreal. A few hours earlier, I had been laughing and talking about dinner plans with my family. Now I was being rushed around a hospital in a foreign land, a source of grim fascination to children and old people alike. The scan was over quickly. My skull was intact. It was time to get stitched up. But first I had to wait until the girl with the bloody nose was tended to. I lay face down on the hospital bed, her blood still on the sheet. It was no time to be fussy. I took a deep breath as the younger doctor injected the anaesthetic. He slowly started to stitch the wound up. But there was more. I was told I needed to have some medicine. A young doctor came into view, brandishing a needle. What's that for? I asked nervously. Season used her phone to translate his explanation. Experimental drug, she said. What? I cried. I wanted to run down the corridor. The doctor wearing shorts came over and explained. It was a tetanus shot. They would try a little, and I would wait 20 minutes to see if I was allergic before they injected some more. The allergy test was the experimental part. I relaxed slightly and allowed him to give me the injection. Are you allergic to alcohol? He asked. No, I said, and I could do with one now. Three hours after we had entered Nanning Hospital, we returned to the hotel. Me nursing a fetching skull bandage with an elastic band under my chin. The staff at the hotel were concerned and much too polite to laugh. Not so my children. They had somehow found their sense of humour. You look like a medieval witch, said my daughter. You laugh about it one day, Mum, said my son. Yes, I said, but inside I was thinking, thank goodness for the kindness of strangers and the Chinese National Health Service. Pam Clackety back home from the Chinese holiday, which did not go entirely according to plan. That's it. Don't forget you can hear our stories anytime you like by downloading the program podcast. But we'll be back here on Radio 4 with a brand new edition on Saturday morning. I do hope you'll join us. Goodbye. From our own correspondent was presented by Kate Adie. The producer is Tony Grant. In a moment, the story of the Kruachen power station and the art is inspired. But first, a look ahead to this time tomorrow. On a train in 1934, one passenger tries to avoid another. You see, I'm not in the habit of addressing strangers. Oh, yeah, pick it up. Easy as winking. Celia Imrie and Charles Edwards star in the first of six two-handers written by John Finnamore. I never read novels. Of course you don't. I've tried. But I cannot get past the fact that everything I am reading is an acknowledged lie. The author asserts Mr. Robinson looked out of his window, and all I can think is, no, he didn't. John Finnamore's Double Acts begins tomorrow morning at 11.30 on BBC Radio 4, and then available to download with the BBC iPlayer radio app. This Saturday night here on Radio 4, we've a groundbreaking new radio drama. Master Rock is a repertoire for a mountain. Written by Maria Fusco, it'll be performed live inside a hydroelectric power station, a deep within the highest mountain on the west coast of Scotland, Ben Clacken. Now on Radio 4, by way of preview, we explore the mountain and the art as inspired in open art inside the rock. The story of uh, this old lady that before, I mean, long, long ago, the water used to come way up the mountain, out of a hole in the mountain, and the water would come roaring out. And at a certain stage, when the lock below got rather full, this old lady's job was to bung this enormous great rock into the hole and stop the water coming. And then she would lie down and have a sleep beside him. And at a certain time, she was supposed to wake up let the water out again and so forth. That was, that was her job. And one day, she didn't. She let the water out and didn't wake up and the entire lot was flooded. And uh, the sea of the water comes out, it looks like a toilet system because the water coming down the the water coming down uh, the tunnel, the tunnel bank, that comes out, and then the tunnel goes up paddle, and the water just flows out. Jack's white boy was I, big Jack could do no wrong. And the reason 
west of Glasgow, on the edge of Loch Orr, lies Ben Cruachan. It's the largest mountain in western Scotland, and in the late 1950s, it was chosen as the site for a new kind of hydroelectric power station. So Cruachan Power Station is a pumped storage hydroelectric power plant, so Cruachan has two reservoirs. It has an upper reservoir and then uses the, the lower reservoir of Loch Awe. I'm Ross Galbraith. I'm Hydro Group Manager for Scottish Power. So Crookin's uh, 440 megawatts uh, of generated electricity, so that's equivalent to roughly a city the size of Edinburgh. We, we take water from the upper reservoir. Uh, the water comes down through huge tunnels that are uh, four or five metres in diameter. Uh, that, that water then goes into to, through a big valve into a turbine and then it's used to turn the, the generator, uh, the generator rotor. So the generator rotor weighs around 200 tonnes. So we use the power of the water to get the generator rotor up to speed and that allows us to, to generate electricity. The water then goes out into to lock off and the real unique thing about Kruikin is that we are able to pump that water back up so the machines can then go in the opposite direction to pump the water back up to the upper reservoir uh, when, when demand on the system is low. And Kruikin was designed with, with flexibility to help the, help support the, the national grid as it, as it does today. Uh, the power station is actually located within the mountain of Ben Kruikin itself or, or is it sometimes known the, the Hollow Mountain. Crookin rises, it's a big thug of a mountain. You get the the coldness uh, that a large mountain range gives the air around it where it's sucking up the light. You know, there's mist and there's mizzle. Um, there's like this sort of light, sticky rain. But you can't see the station at all. The station is completely hidden within it. You enter through a tunnel. The tunnel takes you a mile to go down inside to the actual uh, turbine hole. And as you're going down through the tunnel, the air pressure thickens and changes. And again, there's this low hanging, I would call it smear, like a mist low hanging. And you begin to smell the granite when you go in. It takes you, you go down through, and as you're going down through this mile tunnel, really you're realising that you're going to something that you really, you, you, you realise that you're going into something that you have no immediate recognition of, that it's something that's completely new to you, and something that's sort of incomprehensible. And you get a sense, well I got a very strong sense, of feeling that I was entering a cave that had been found, rather than something that had been carved out by human hands. My name is Maria Fusco. I'm a Belfast-born writer, now based in Scotland. I work across discipline, so I've written fiction, I've written screenplays, uh, I've written novels and art criticism. I visited uh, Kruokin as a tourist, possibly about six years ago. I was just very interested in the mixture of geology, mythology and technology in the site. I felt very overwhelmed by the huge scale of the place, but also very touched by the humanness of the scale, the hand marks in terms of the chiselling and the blasting and the boring on the walls, and felt that it was a very unique um, and in many ways a strange place. This power station blasted into solid granite on the west coast of Scotland, almost invisible from the outside, and it ignited something very 